but I do admire William and Harry. I grew up kind of watching them at a similar age and the strength of character of those two boys are amazing. They had to share the hardest day, in my opinion, in any man's life with a hundred million pairs of eyes watching them the day they buried their mother. And yet, both of them have turned out to be very admirable young men. Harry's my favourite. <laughs> Harry is my favourite. I just love his antics. It makes me laugh all the time. Welcome to the A Midlife Traveler podcast, where we want you to go see the world, discover interesting stories about people, places, and practical advice to help you plan your next vacation. Hello, and thanks for joining the A Midlife Traveler podcast, where we are exploring Scotland through the voices, stories, and opinions of a Scotsman named James. I'm Laura, and I'm your host, and if you've been following our Scotland series, it's been a while since we've had a new episode. We have been posting new episodes in our Ireland series and also our Women Travel series, but we're now getting back to some cool stuff about Scotland. And today, what you are going to hear about is the British royal family. Oh my goodness, they are all over the news these days, aren't they? Congratulations to Prince William, who just had a baby boy in the last couple of days. And of course, Prince Harry is going to be getting married next month. You're going to hear opinions about the British royal family from a Scotsman named James. And today, this first part is going to be about... Queen Elizabeth. So Queen Elizabeth is the beloved British queen. And so today is the story from a Scotsman who is sharing his opinion that Queen Elizabeth is a great lady. And he gives an example of why he thinks that and why the world loves Queen Elizabeth told through the story of a dinner party and event that possibly happened. Enjoy the story and thanks for listening to A Midlife Traveler. So I do admire uh, many of the royals, some of them are, and the Queen, she is, is a great lady actually. She, she has no power um, in the sense that that was all handed over to the government by William of Orange in the late 1600s. But she's an extremely, extremely influential woman a woman that carries no power. There are many heads of states, government officials and presidents around the world that would never, ever entertain a man like David Cameron or Tony Blair. But they'll speak to the Queen because they all love Lizzie. And when we had the G8 summit uh, in Scotland, the Queen invited many of the members of the G8 summit to have dinner with her at Buckingham Palace. She'd also invited other heads of states from around the world as well. And she wanted to, to discuss with these individuals about grouping our efforts together to help with world famine. Queen Elizabeth got a signed agreement of, of 30 officials in under 40 minutes. The G8 summit hasn't had a signed agreement in its entirety because they just they all like the Queen and she's just such a sweet lady. What I heard about that dinner party, again, I wasn't there, I got an invite, but a bit busy, um, was that, I don't know what the first course was, but it, it was probably like prawns or crab or something that they must have used their hands with. Because they cleared away the, the dishes and then they brought out finger bowls to wash their, their fingers for the next. But the head of state of Nigeria, he picked his up and drank it. <gasps> so the queen picked hers up and drank it and then motioned for everybody at the table to do the same as to not embarrass the head of state of Nigeria. And I just thought, what? How sweet is that of the Queen? And then I thought, double-edged sword. Because now the head of state of Nigeria is travelling the Western world, drinking finger bowls, going, this is disgusting, but the Queen does it. The Queen does it. 
And now onto the story about James's opinions as to why Prince William and Prince Harry and the royal family have earned his personal respect. And you're going to hear um, <laughs> his opinion on why Prince Harry is his favorite. Now, please note that when we talked to James for this podcast, it was before Prince Harry had announced he was being married to uh, Meghan Markle. So now that the wedding is pending here soon, I bet the the spirit of fun that Prince Harry still incites in many people is still there. I don't mind the royals. It's very divided between the country. There are as many people in the north that do or don't support the royals as there is in the south. It's not a Scottish or English thing, being a royalist. Like in my family, for example, My nana and my mum have every anniversary teacup, teaspoon, you can, it's good, they're going to be worth a fortune. And they go right back to like the 1940s, to when the Queen got married, nana's got that cup and and teaspoon and every Jubilee cup and teaspoon, she's got all the Prince and Diana ones and all of them. But then you ask my grandpa, I say to my grandpa, I just do it for a laugh. I grab the one with Charles and Diana. and said, do you want a cup of tea, Papa? And he, this is what he does. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this is hilarious. And he really means it in his face. I can see it in his face. So it, it's not just an English and Scottish thing. And there's a big, massive group of people in Britain that when the royals have children, they camp outside the palace and cry. I don't under... They call themselves royalists. I prefer to call them stalkers. That's quite scary behaviour. Now, I admire, and I don't admire many people, but I do admire William and Harry. I grew up kind of watching them at a similar age, and the strength of character of those two boys are amazing. They had to share the hardest day, in my opinion, in any man's life, with a hundred million pairs of eyes watching them the day they buried their mother. And yet, both of them have turned out to be very admirable young men. Harry's my (laughs) favourite. Harry is my favourite. I just love his antics. He makes me laugh all the time. The press need to back off. The press have said many times, oh, Harry, he's not a nice royal. He's not very conducive with with the press. Yeah, because you hounded his mother. You hounded her and may have been responsible for what happened in that tunnel. So give him a break, okay? And then last year, I couldn't stop laughing. It was in the mirror, this pre- and I thought, how stupid. And they wrote, because <laughs> Harry, they caught him out having a beer. Oh, my Lord. Because with with, he's, he's a military man. He, he came back from tour and he took his soldiers out and bought them all beer. And he was having a few as well. So they <laughs> they wrote in the news, they wrote... Oh, Harry, he's acting like such a playboy. Uh Uh-huh. He's a prince in 2016. (laughs) Of course he's that. They're lucky it's not me. (laughs) I would be in the newspapers every day writing off Matt Serazzi's. It's okay, just send the bill to my grandmother. I'd be having affairs with all the daughters of Monaco, unashamedly and openly. So, you know, I think he's doing okay. And the thing is, Harry knows that he is never, ever going to be king. So why is he worried about his public image? And I think William is jealous because he's got to remain, you know, I mean, as Harry's getting to just kind of do what he wants. But I think so. I mean, when I see them, they always look kind of happy. I could be a royal for sure, but I just, you know, when I was younger, I used to think, oh, it'd be great to be this or great to be that, you know, prince or this. But as I've started to get a bit older, I've realised that one of the things that I can't put a price tag on is my anonymity. It's been, I can kind of go places and, you know, they're not going to recognise me. You know, if, if, if I'm out, say, <laughs> if me and Valamore go out for a meal and try to rekindle things, um, and, maybe we, and maybe we get into a small argument. So, and then... And then I wake up in the morning and I'm oh no, oh no, oh no, I need a phone valet, oh my lord, what have I done? What I won't have to wake up to is on the front page of every newspaper in the country. So the royals have to have this public face 
and 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 I don't know how because I sometimes have this little thought in my head when everybody's standing outside Buckingham Palace waiting for the curtains to draw back. I've got this vision of Kate. She's got her hands wrapped round Williams. Like I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And then the curtain opens because they have to have this this public face, and I don't know if I could do that all the time. So there you have it, a Scotsman's opinion on the British royal family and how Queen Elizabeth is pretty darn great and Harry is his favorite. Hey, are you out there listening? Are you considering a trip to Scotland? Because if you are, I just want to let you know that we have created a Scotland vacation ideas resource page on our website at a midlifetraveler.com. So what you have there is a hand curated selection of vacations in Scotland ranging from five days, I think up into about 13 day vacations, plus a big list of smaller activities, day tours, things to do that are either attractions, tickets, hop on, hop off buses, or just one to two day tours around the area. So if you're thinking about a trip to Scotland, go ahead and check a midlifetraveler.com, look up Scotland vacation ideas, And thanks so much for listening and safe travels wherever you may roam.